wife found that picture and said that you've always been a geek anyway um, and messed about with people's computers. So why don't you do something to do with computers? So when you start inquiring, the people that crop up on Google, you know, I want to train in IT, is, you know, all the usual suspects are companies that want to lend you thousands and thousands of pounds to get certifications and qualifications that you're probably never really going to use and you're never going to recoup that money. Yeah, so I mean, pretty much it does come down to, you know, selling a kidney or, you know, taking a second charge on your house to, you know, go and sit in a sort of boot camp somewhere and learn some, you know, Microsoft certifications or... So the path I took was, you know, the usual ones, doing like on TIA, Cisco, Microsoft. And, you know, like I said before, like they sell you these, oh yeah, you'll get a job, £40,000, this, that, and they get these certifications. Um, and you sort of realise their focus is on sales. You know, when you look at the figures that these companies make, I've got nothing against these companies, you know, people do need training, and these companies do provide a, a, a quality training. Well, oh, I'm going to point at someone with a laser, you know. Um, <laughs> so you can see, you know, the, um, you know, 92, you know, million revenue, it's, you know, quite a decent thing for actually selling you the training. They've not got any sort of comeback to that. Once they've sold the training, the deal's done. See, I landed myself a job, 10 grand a year. Uh, <laughs> um, and this were at Further Education College. Um, so it was an awful contract, it was awful money, but I thought, well, you know, I'm in here with all these like, you know, clever people that are gonna share their knowledge with me and help me gain experience in this new industry. But the problem you've got, if you follow the path before, is a lot of people have paid for their knowledge and, and it becomes um, a possession. You know, when knowledge becomes a possession, you know, so you'll get people sort of with comments like, you know, I paid two grand to learn this, you know, so I'm not really going to share it with you. Or, you know, you'll speak to, I remember at the time speaking to like the senior technician, and that was his, his line though, you know. Um, oops, if I, he says, you know, if I told you, you know, you know as much as me, you know, which sort of devalues what I do, you know. So it, it was a real, real opposite to sort of open source, if you like. It was a real, really sort of closed knowledge environment. So I quit and I set up a company called Lower is IT Limited and we just did the usual blurry stuff, IT solutions and support, setting up networks, setting up offices, providing training how to use you know, um, applications on computers, all that stuff and anything slightly technical, you know, like the call out to sort of use the remote control and air conditioning and things like that, those sort of calls we used to get, which is great, you know, sort of, it paid the bills, you know, just sort of plodded on, but it wasn't really satisfying. But the main thing was, practically every company that we visited asked that question. Do you do websites? You know, so we said, yeah, yeah, of course we do. We didn't. We said, you know, yeah, we do websites. So we went doing that traditional route. Get a template site, get a template, put the branding on, edit that branding in, uh, web authoring tool like Dreamweaver. Um, but then they start asking for functionality, you know, like a contact form. Um, how can we capture the fields off that contact form? I want a page returning when they've submitted. So this is, you know, from somebody who's not really a web developer, um, you know, learning these skills, we got a bit of PHP. Um, oh yeah, that was another one that we got. Um, to, you know, we'll get the commissions um, for monthly payments paid over 23 months, you know. Something that you're doing on a templating um, system, you know, just putting some um, random colours and, and, and logo, logos and branding on sites. So I, being asked to do stuff like that was, there was only so much Googling I could do with like, you know, PHP and connecting to the database and sort of hacking all this stuff up to actually do what people wanted it to do. And then I found CMSs. Someone's done all this stuff before, you know what I mean? Awesome, you know what I mean? I don't need to sort of hack anymore. And so we found Drupal at first and I hated Drupal. Um, I went on to Joomla and I hated Joomla. I went to WordPress and I hated WordPress. Because nothing sort of really does you to hack it up. And then eventually sort of started to see a, a, a picture emerging of Drupal as one that really is sort of a, a community focused. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it has been uh, linked to sort of like it's like a cult, you know, a, a religion, a cult or whatever. But <laughs> it's not. I just think that what it is, it's that people focus in on making the software work better. I mean, we do criticise our own 
concept management system quite a lot, but I think it's that's what makes it better. So I found the one, um, which was Drupal. Um, and like I said, it's not a steep learning curve. It, it's a smorgasbord, so you really are like a cat amongst the pigeons at first. You know, like from really sort of trying to hack what people wanted to all of a sudden I've got like all of these modules that can do all sorts. So what a lot of developers do at first is they, or we did, um, oversold a lot of what clients wanted. You know, they might have just wanted a, a basic site, this, that, the other. But we ended up giving them, they all singing, all dancing, every bell and whistle you can imagine, you know, a highly configurable uh, website. Um, so what we're saying is like, for us, it's been a long winding road to sort of get to using Drupal. And when we first started, there was like a real, like a few online resources. I don't know, like, if you search Drupal on YouTube, I think you got one when panels first come out or something. And now there's loads. I mean, you can watch like, I think the one the other day about um, Amiga 4, like a four hour video. You know, if you've got time to watch stuff like that. Um, but when you're sort of new to this and you, just things like finding a base theme and changing that theme could be like a real challenge. And you know, using things like Artistia. I don't know how many of you have come across Artistia, which is um, like a theming GUI uh, that you can use it and create really curvish, awful themes. Um, and getting to groups of things like views and panels and how you display your content and display suite and doing things like theme overrides. All these things on the learning curve we're taking a real long time to and especially when you, it's on an active project that you're doing for a client you know so it's something that you've got the pressure of the client saying you know is this ready and at the same time at the back end you're sort of panicking trying to learn how to do it as you're doing it um, and like you'd like say like the bad practice of working on live sites and doing everything via FTP so FTP and into the site changing it all you know the old bad habits from Dreamweaver so then I discovered um, a few local user groups. I didn't discover them because they were already there. Um, but things like PHP Northwest and you know uh, Phil and everybody at uh, Northwest Drupal user group. So you can sort of go along and you can ask questions, but it's so fleeting. You know what I mean? You've got so much. You know, you, you've got all these pent up questions that you need answers to. You know, but you've just got this like one night a month. You know, it's just not going to happen. You know, it's, it, there's just too much. Northern Digitals isn't going anymore. That was really good. That was like a, a digital creatives beer drinking side things. Um, but you do find out a lot of answers to them questions you've got pent up over drinking beer as well. Um, so then, from going to the uh, Drupal user group, the local Drupal user group, I think it was, uh, it's not any of it, but I think Chris ran a session on the Drupal ladder. And the actual goal of the Drupal ladder is to have 1% of the Drupal community contributing to core by 2014, which is a few weeks on. And it's open to contributions and collaboration from anyone. So, I mean, you can put a lesson on that, you can put, you can create your own ladder. So, if you see, you know, like uh, a a training need in Drupal, or you've been through some sort of struggle, you can sort of shorten that by documenting that, put videos on all learning results, do that as a learning ladder for other people to learn from. There's a steering group behind it um, that, you know, they're sort of, um, the sort of cleverer people at the, the, the development end of Drupal, if you like, um, and the mentors that in the steering group, there are five areas are the distribution, there's actually a distribution you can download that's got bugs in it that you can fix, you know, rather than, uh, so I can show you, the actual ladders and lessons, uh, learning sprints, issue sprints, um, integration with the community and knowledge sharing initiatives. Uh, these are the people that's, um, that's behind the Drupal ladder, but on the steering group, and that's Addison Berry, uh, Brock Ball and Brian Hirsch, Karen Cassio and Kate Van Holkenberg. Um, and all these people are contactable via IRC and involved in training um, in Drupal. So this is the oh, Drupal good, ladder. Oh, apologise. 
Um, so this next one is a bit of a cop out. It's a presentation, in my presentation, by somebody else. But it's only like a five minute video. Um, I won't take it to the third person. Right? You know, so a presentation inside a presentation inside a presentation. But it's just a five minute video, just to explain the real what Drupal Ladder is. Because, um, to be honest with you, this is far more eloquent at doing it in a very short space of time than I could bumble through in 40 minutes. So this is the Drupal Ladder Call to Action. If you're a Drupal Meetup organizer, please show this presentation to your group. Don't just send them the link to this recording of me speaking. Show it to your meetup and talk about it and see what you guys would like to do. I'm going to tell you about the Drupal Ladder and what the mission is should you choose to accept it and, of course, what the next steps are. And the first thing I want to say is it's a massive challenge that we have ahead of us. On a positive note, of course, we should recognize that the number of actual contributors to Drupal 4 has gone up, yet the number of issues has been skyrocketing. In the eight months after Drupal 7 was released, there were 9,000 open issues in the core issue queue. It's really impossible for contributors to keep up. You know, this includes users making and creating tickets and making suggestions and all potential improvements. So this means as a percentage of the total Drupal, Drupal users on Drupal.org, it's actually gone down. So as a percentage, contribution has actually gone down. And we want to get to 1% by 2014 in order to make the project and the project sustainable. So you're probably wondering, how can we do it? Well, we're gonna get people on the ladder. The Drupal ladder is a clear, step-by-step, -step, mentored way to get involved in contribution. The ladders themselves are actually a series of lessons. You can acquire the skills that you need. There's the Drupal ladder, that just gets you set up with Git, learning actual how to, how to write, um, for example, patches against a botched uh, copy of an earlier version of Drupal 8. You actually write a, an issue for a known issue, excuse me, write a patch for a known issue, and now there'll be individual multilingual ladders and individual initiative ladders. So the ladders themselves can be broken up into the idea of the learn sprint and the issue sprint. So the learn sprints are the first five steps on the Drupal ladder. It really only takes about an hour. You know, if you don't finish it all at this meetup, you know, you get, you're get you getting installed and you have just enough time to get started in the issue queue, just come back next week, test some patches and write a patch. <coughs> um, the issue sprints are two to three hours long and at that point you actually go out and find a core system that you're passionate about. And that's what's really great about this is that you go and find something that you want to get involved in. And the final step where we're, we're aiming towards is to get more maintainers up that ladder. So people are prepared to maintain core components or different initiatives. And uh, that would be great to see. So the great thing is it's different. It's really about connecting people. So this isn't about just making learning material available. It's not a video. It's not a book. It's really about getting people to help others, and those people who want to help others. And the guidance and mentoring is built in and baked in and you're probably wondering how we know this works. Well, it's actually been done. It was started with the Boston Drupal User Group, and they actually developed the initial ladders and this whole concept. And by the time DrupalCon Munich had happened, uh, they had 10 user groups holding issue sprints, <coughs> and they released a, <coughs> there's actually a release of the Drupal ladder, the distribution itself, that's what they're learning with, and Drupal ladder, it's uh, .org itself. And since Munich, uh, we can say that basically up until now, there have been 20 cities involved in running events. And just since Munich, there's user groups in India, Costa Rica, US, and UK. So you can really see this a big global effort. And you're probably wondering now, what is the goal? Uh, the goal right now is to get 30 more user groups involved with holding issue sprints. So that's going to start learn sprints and then issue sprints. And um, I should say, we also want to have more curricula for ladders developed for major Drupal initiatives. <clears throat> so we want to have every, uh, by, the, by the following term, that'll be up until DrupalCon, um, I don't think it's going to be Prague now, every active user group, we're hoping that they will have held an issue sprint by that time. So that's two out of 100 active users actually identified as potential contributors. And then we want to see one out of 100 active users actually contributing by March 2014. So there's people who are going to watch your presentation in your user group and they may be So it's a, the great thing is Drupal 8 development is quite different from Drupal 7. The initiatives are really awesome. It's distributing people's passion and helping people get around, get organized around specific topics. 
and mentoring is built into the process. You go to j.mp forward slash DA court, and you can see this list of updates from the particular initiative, find out when meetings are, and they actually identify specific issues that you can help out on. It's very well organized. And there's also the core mentoring hours. So this is weekly guidance to learn how to uh, get your patches reviewed, and it's, it's really, um, it's great because the door window's open there, and people are getting help if they need. So the next steps, what can you do? Organize a sprint if you can. This is one held in Costa Rica by an SSIT. And if you want to know how to organize a sprint, you can find out how to on groups.drupal.org forward slash drupal dash ladder. And there you can get uh, help. And you can also talk with us on IRC drupal dash ladder. And if I want to decide which type of sprint you want to run, the first thing you run is a learn sprint. Make sure everybody's set up with Git, knows how to use um, the issue queue, knows how to test and write patches. And then you follow up with an issue sprint. So find what your group is interested in. Maybe you've got a lot of people who'd like to get involved twig initiative, or maybe you'd like people to get involved in some, in some other aspect of uh, their development. And after you run your sprint, tell people about it. Here, Torchbox Digital, sorry, Torchbox, uh, based in um, Oxford, they actually uh, ran a learn sputter, people got a learn sprint, and then they talked about it. And that's what I want to see, people tweeting out the events, taking photographs of them, and tell people about it. And even if you can't uh, run one right now, tell your own Drupal meetup about it and present this at maybe a Drupal camp and share these links and help people get involved. And Karen Cassio, she's actually helping people run learn sprints and Brock Boland is helping people run issue sprints. There's more information about the steering group, people behind the whole thing on DrupalLadder.org. And all the links you need are here and we're looking forward to hearing from you. So. Thank you, Heather, for putting that so eloquently, much better than I could do, um, for my career training. So, I think what it, it's getting to, especially now with Drupal 8 coming out, there's another steep learning curve, and I don't want to have to go through all that sort of laborious learning by chance, what I've done, learning by accident. So it really sets up um, best practice. Uh, this is the actual ladder itself, um, and it's this is the core ladder, I think, uh, learning ladder. So it's just simple things, I mean, we recently had a sprint, and it's just things like installing Drupal locally, like the best practice to do that with things like your host files as opposed to using, you know, something like XAMPP or, or whatever, and then to install Git, and it sort of gets you uh, using best practice from the outset rather than using bad practice like I originally did, originally did and having to sort of undo all that and relearn. Um, and obviously onward, to conquer the eight because there's a lot of really really good stuff on the like last year there were just a couple of things like the Drupal ladder but there's you know there's the twig ladder now which you know a lot of us are going to really need to get our teeth into um, you know it's a totally different way we're going to have to start working and NW Doug um, I does it monthly the sprint so I'm not too sure is it like six weekly or we're trying to do it monthly don't yeah we're trying to do monthly is uh, a monthly sprint. So I'm saying what we should really do at the monthly sprints, I mean this was the first sprint we had which were really, really well attended. And like what Heather was saying in the video, you know, you should start it and have a learn sprint and things like that. But the problem is it tends to be rolling, you know, you'll get people that will turn up that's not done something before. So I think it'd be a good idea to have like sort of tables of ability. So, you, you know, you could have like a table for people setting up, you know, the, the instance of Drupal locally and setting up Git. And then you can have, you know, the, the sort of, the, the fast runners at the front um, contributing to court. But if we have like a, a monthly thing where people can come along to and avoid bad practice, um, then it'll it'll help core, um, it'll help the local Drupal community. Um, like I said, it, on this slide it's saying like, at least, I mean, because this is just on uh, Drupal UK, so there's other user groups than what's on there. Oh, laser. Um, so like if each one of them 14 or 15 people had a, a monthly sprint and ladder, that's half the people that they want internationally. So that, you know. But I'm also it's an interesting one for people because, especially at an event like this, you know, you look at how many people need developers and front end themers, stuff like that, that it's a way of Drupal itself having like a little human hatchery, creating a little orchard of developers themselves because we we're talking about this before that you know there's nobody coming out of university a Drupal developer you know it, it, 
just doesn't happen. So unless we, as a community, can train and, and, and bring people up to sort of a standard ourselves, then we're all we're going to be perpetually in this state of not having enough developers, not having enough themers, um, and. Like I said, that looks bad on a, on projects in Drupal because people, you know, CEOs can be put off because they, you know, people might not be able to deliver on time and stuff uh, because there's not enough developers. And also, it competes. Um, I know people say like, you know, you can't WordPress and Drupal and stuff like that. It's like comparing apples and oranges. But it's not true if you're going after a contract. If someone's going to do your what you're going after in a WordPress site and stuff like that, if there's more WordPress groups, more WordPress training in Manchester at Madlab, there's like a WordPress training course every month, um, you know, from beginner to advanced. And I think if we could provide some, I mean, this is, I think it's about 200 pound, can I say, but, um, but if we could provide something, a free resource for people to come in and learn, um, then I think, you know, we could close the gap. I put this in because I wanted to put a graph in because I think graphs are cool. Um, <laughs> and it gives me a parabolic curve to point to with my laser. Um, and, but this is the uh, this is the top ten thousand sites in the world because I mean, say like you know, every one in fifty sites is a Drupal site. But these are the top ten thousand sites, and obviously, like Drupal's much higher up than uh, Joomla and all the other CMSs. But WordPress is like head and shoulders above. But I mean, it might be got WordPress; it's got its players and stuff. But it, it doesn't have the functionality that Drupal has. So I mean, it, to me, it, it shouldn't command that position because I think it commands that position. Uh, Position because more there's more structured training available for WordPress and things because this is the top 10,000 sites. This isn't blog sites, you know. Um, but the other thing is, I just want to ask if anybody can tweet out why in June <laughs> there were all these websites done in all these other CMSs, but not WordPress. So um, I don't know. Why they all die? Yeah, yeah, that's it. yeah. Yeah, but there's a real blip in the middle there. But um, and and this is the um, top one million sites in the world, and Joomla's just above um, Drupal there, apart from this massive parabolic curve in the middle that I can point to in my laser, three, four laser points I've done in the rest. Um, so, sprints and ladders, essentially, what I would like for every user group in the country to have a monthly or bi-monthly um, sprint and ladder, what people can use as a, a regular learning resort they can turn up to and they can avoid all the pitfalls and the time wasting that you have to go through trying to solve all these problems in a hacky way that you can find best practice right from the start. And that's like I said, from Ninja Rockstars, you know, because people want to push themselves and there's people there at the sprints contributing to core that are up at that, you know, that you can't be what you can't see, you know. So if you can see like top ninja coders and stuff like that, you know, you can get advice and help from them as well as like right down the stack to setting up your your um, your Drupal site. And it's peer-to-peer -peer learning, which I think is the absolute best way to learn anything, you know, from your, your peers. It contributes to code. Like I said before, it's like going over that ground. It enlightens the path. It shows you really that, you know, this is the best way to do it. This is the way to do it. And also, if, if you've learned something of somebody in, in a, a open source type of community like that, you're more likely to pass that knowledge on to somebody in that community and some very clever French philosopher that, you know, to teach is to learn twice because I personally think that I don't fully understand something until I can teach it to somebody else. Um, so, yeah, um, that's my talk. Thanks very much. It's on joined in, so it's my first ever public talk as well. So, um, <laughs> When's the next one? <laughs> oh, I've got ten minutes left. <laughs> when is the next sprint, Bill? Uh, there's one in December. Yeah. I, I don't know the exact date, but... Um, it's on Eventbrite. It'll be on Eventbrite. Um, no, we meet up. Uh, oh, meet up, sorry, yeah. yeah. Is it uh, on a Wednesday, like, uh, in the week, it is? No, it's on a Saturday. Right, cool. And so that's the good thing, is it's a full day. Uh, you know, so yeah. it's not... Because I, I absolutely love, like, you know, our monthly meet-up at NWW. It tends to be a, a talk... So say you've got somebody that comes in, we've seen it a few times, you know, like, they'll come in and they, you know, we'll do like a Ram Robin and introduce ourselves, I'm quite new to Drupal. And, you know, the, the talk that night will be about Selenium testing with Jenkins. 
and you see this like vague sort of thing wave over them, and you know there's and it's it's brilliant for us, and I mean I you know I love the music, but I think we need something that's more structured, like a ladder. Um, I was going to try and climb that, cause it's like a ladder, but they told me I couldn't have the shape. But, um, but yeah, so something more structured that people can sort of come in at, at an entry level, and hopefully because I mean I also attend Drupal Yorkshire, and I was talking to some of the guys over there, and they're you know happy to sort of come along and, and run a sprint. London's great, you know, it's Queensland's there and everything. Um, but you know they have like quite a regular sprints and have done for a long time and they've got like learning Drupal there you know but these things need setting up so I'm going to like help you know the people in Leeds set one up over there as well um, I mean at the moment they're all running on the same day and I think it'd be quite good sort of selfishly um, if we could sort of stagger them yeah. then you know it gives that extra resource for people who can't you know because we all have regular commitments so they asked myself some questions then <laughs> any more for any more? Andy? What do you think about, one of, the, one of the things I see when I look at the ladder is it seems to be, um, there are a number of things on there I, I don't think have to be the only way in. So for instance, it's uh, having a local Drupal installation yeah. running on a, say, a server on your own machine. Yeah. Then having Git installed, I'm thinking that there are other ways into it, like the uh, what's the name of the thing where you can download a patch and it'll run it on some simply test me. Yeah. Simply test me. That's what I'm thinking. Do you think that will be a, a, a good shortcut to get someone directly involved in an issue rather than yep. having to? Yeah. I think and so. If you if yeah. you um, go on, Jan, sorry, yeah, go. If you go to the um, learning ladder things at DrupalCon. That's technically one of the things they say. So they do they do show you how to do local installs and Git, but they also show you how to install Dreaditor, which everyone who's the issue queue should have Dreaditor. Yes. <laughs> and it does it does give you every patch, it automatically puts a link right next to it that will automatically install a Drupal site with that patch applied. Yeah. And it is a good way. The reason why we do the local host and the, the Git stuff is because if you want at the moment recognition for contribution in Drupal isn't perfect because there's loads of ways you can contribute but the only recognition you get is if you get your name on a patch or if you get your name on a commit in core yeah. and the only way you're going to get your name on a commit in core is if you make a change to a patch on an issue queue and to do that you need to be able to write that patch somewhere and be able to post it and the, the way we tend to encourage people to get involved and to contribute is to get it as easy as possible for them to get that recognition because then people are happy with the effort they've made, they have their name on a list and they're more likely to do it again. Sure, right, so there's a so there's, there Yeah, the but again, the, the, the ladder we're talking about is the Drupal core ladder. There's plenty of other ladders and other ways of getting involved and there's no reason why we can't do other ladders. You can, well that's the beauty of the Drupal ladders, it's so, I mean it's that open source that actually, I think if you look on lessons, it's that open source you can, you can actually get Oh, they've got rid of them actually earlier, but earlier on it, because it, it does get hacked a lot because you can actually contribute, you know, you could get fake handbags on there earlier on. Well, <laughs> um, because you can actually contribute, you know, so if you've got a different way that you think is a, a good way, and a, a way you can actually add that as a lesson, it doesn't necessarily need to be a ladder, you know, but it can be a lesson, it's sort of getting everything in that sort of one resource, because that's, that's sort of non to many things. So what happened before is, like I said, you know, you have maybe one sort of YouTube video about panels or something, but... But now there is just like it's an information overload out there. There's just that many sort of answers to one question. But I think if you've got sort of got some sort of centralised resource that people can contribute to, it gets reviewed. I mean, obviously they took the handbags off, didn't pass the test. Um, um, but you know, just it, you can actually contribute and, and put that lesson on there. That's what I'm saying. That's the beauty of it. You know, if you come across something that you think will save people time and make their life easier and things like that. So. There's no vagrant on there yet, I don't think. I suppose I've got to keep everything universally structured in one way. Because if we do do like a York one and a Manchester one, yeah. and we're actually doing uh, the uploads and the patches and stuff differently, how we're, how we're actually developing them, you go from this one to the Leeds one, and then you've got to go through the learning one again. Exactly, so that's what I'm saying though, that, that's, that's what's making it the same, it's, it's standardising it, and, exactly. it, 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 and that's the beauty of it, that we're not going to you know, make all the mistakes I've made on the road. 
Um, and especially, like I said, with D8 coming out, that it'd be good if we could get, like, um, well, the UK, really. You know, the UK can the little sort of hub of, um, you know, Drupal you know, patches and commits to core and things like that. But if, if half of the 15 start, you know, meeting regularly and contributing, then, you know, it's going to be brilliant for the UK sort of Drupal community and grow everyone's knowledge. So there's been a bit, bit more push towards doing contrib um, work as opposed to core because it'd be a bit less scary for kind of new yeah. people and also trying to get someone local who's a, a contrib. So down in Brighton we have a guy who does like the common stock model, but yeah. having someone there who's actually like a project owner, yeah. so you can get patches and then reviews and then committed like so yeah. you get because otherwise if you do core then it could be like weeks before anything That's right, yeah. happens. And also you've got like the other things that are in Drupal as well that you can look at because you know that what's it called bug fix bingo they used to call that I think didn't they on the you know like the little sort of uh, hanging fruit bits that you can have a go at mm. you know as novices um, you know but yeah that's awesome if you've got somebody there that's actually a, a, you know product owner yeah so the, the last Drupal call we were trying to do it so that because generally if people get something committed quicker then they're more likely to come back and do that's right more involved yeah. And, yeah. And push it on like that. absolutely cool. I suppose it's like Lana said yesterday, even if people are just going in like, uh, correct, exactly. it's all like the documentation and stuff like that, yeah. it all builds up. And it all you want to get a commit into Drupal or quickly, search for rerolls. It's the fastest way to get your numbers up. All you have to do is take a patch that already fixes the solution and just reapply it to the most recent version of Drupal. If you need to have no understanding of what it does whatsoever, you'll still get your name on the list. It's fantastic. Right, I'm a little bit early, but you know, it's Sunday and we've just had our dinner and we're all tired, so right, keep plugging it. Keep, yeah, go on. <laughs> Look at the world leader in Drupal contribution. <laughs> I wish. Any more questions? Comments? Fruit to throw? Apple. Gold <laughs> balls. Alright, so thank you very much.